Okay, welcome everyone to a new episode of Technique Tuesday. This week, we're gonna be looking at how to train the hamstrings with perfect technique. Now, just in general, because the hamstrings are a biarticular muscle, meaning they cross both the hip joint and the knee joint, I think it's good programming advice to include some kind of knee flexion-based movement, like a leg curl, and some kind of hip hinge-based movement, like a Romanian deadlift, in your routine, which is something I discussed in more detail in a hamstrings training video that I'll link down below, and I might cover that in a future Technique Tuesday video on the leg curl and glute ham raise variations. Now before we get into the Romanian deadlift technique itself, I do want to clear up some semantics. So there's an ongoing debate in lifting circles about the difference between a Romanian deadlift or an RDL and a stiff leg deadlift. I think the main difference is that the Romanian deadlift starts out of the rack while a stiff leg deadlift starts from the floor as a sort of high hip deadlift. The RDL ends the range of motion just below the knees whereas the stiff leg deadlift allows the bar to come more forward so that the plates actually touch the ground. Now for the purpose of developing the glutes and the hamstrings, um, I personally prefer the RDL. However, the stiff leg deadlift may have a bit more strength carryover to the conventional deadlift off the floor. Okay, so with the RDL, we're basically training pure hip extension where the glutes and hamstrings contract to straighten out the hips. There will also be a strong isometric lumbar extension contraction occurring as the spinal erectors contract to keep the lower back in neutral. So to set up the RDL, you wanna set up the bar in the rack just below the height of your deadlift lockout. Take a roughly shoulder width grip just outside your thighs. And since the RDL is loaded less heavily than the conventional deadlift, you should be able to use a double overhand grip without issue. However, an alternate grip can be used to prevent grip fatigue, or you can use straps to take your grip out of the equation on heavier sets and just don't become dependent on them for all lifts. Stand up with the bar and take three steps back out of the rack the same as you would for a squat walkout. Stand with a roughly shoulder width stance with your feet pointed slightly out by about 10 degrees and with your legs just inside your hands. Now, even though the sumo RDL is a lift I've used in the past for assisting sumo deadlift strength, I do find it to be a bit awkward and many people just aren't flexible enough to do it right. And so I usually recommend the conventional stance for the RDL. And before you initiate the negative, you wanna brace by lifting your chest and stomach up which is gonna help you keep your spine extended. And you should maintain the spinal position throughout the lift. You can also think about packing your lats by slightly pushing back against the bar. Begin the negative by pushing your hips straight back, keeping the shins completely vertical. Now, a slight bend in the knees is a good thing, but you don't want the knees to travel forward like they would in a squat. And you can imagine there being a wall directly in front of your knees, preventing them from moving forward. The bar should stay centered directly over the middle of the foot as you keep it in tight to your shins. Only lower the bar to the point where you can no longer set your hips back any further without having your lower back either round or come forward. Now, unless you have extremely long arms or incredible mobility, this usually means ending the range of motion somewhere between just below knee level and mid shin. The plates shouldn't actually actually touch the floor on an RDL. You wanna reverse the motion by pushing your hips forward and lifting your chest up while keeping the bar centered over the midfoot. To get the glutes more involved, you can squeeze the glutes hard at the top, posteriorly tilting the pelvis and moving the bar slightly forward as well. Now, however, I personally prefer to use the RDL more for hamstrings emphasis and will usually end the range of motion at or near full hip extension without that additional posterior tilt. And because the glutes are gonna be contributing to hip extension regardless, they're gonna be highly active even without that additional glute squeeze. Now, as a more advanced technique, you can try putting a five pound plate under your toes, which is gonna enhance the feeling of hamstring stretch in some people. And even though I haven't seen any research on this, I tend to feel a stronger mind muscle connection with my distal or lower hamstrings when I do them this way. And I suspect there may be some differences in regional activation patterns as well. Now I would say out of any exercise that we've covered so far, people mess up technique on this exercise the most. And I would say the most common error is to overextend the range of motion. Now, a lot of people pride themselves on their deep squat or their full range of motion pull-ups, leading some people to think that more range of motion is always better. Now, this simply isn't the case. It's common to see people lower the plates all the way down to the floor, simply resulting in lowering or rounding at the lumbar rather than increasing range of motion at the hips. And you'll even see people standing on a bench or a jump box to extend the range of motion even further, 
which is only gonna increase risk of a tear without any extra significant tension to the hamstrings. And while it's somewhat more common to see women with impressive hamstrings flexibility and hip mobility be able to touch the plates to the floor without compromising spinal position, for the vast majority of men and women, the lift should end somewhere just above mid shin level. Now, another very common error is having the knees travel forward. Now, this usually stems from loading the lift too heavily, turning it into a sort of top half conventional deadlift. And this is not only more dangerous, but it's also gonna take a lot of tension away from the hamstrings and the glutes, putting much more emphasis onto the quads. It's also really common for people to drop their hips down rather than setting their hips straight back. And this can then lead to all kinds of other issues like having the bar travel too far forward, having the knees bend too much, or losing upper body rigidity and spinal position. Now, a reasonable alternative here would be the dumbbell RDL, which is the exact same movement pattern, except using dumbbells instead of the barbell. And the good morning is another similar hip hinge dominant exercise we've discussed in a previous Technique Tuesday. And I'll put a link to that video over here. Now, don't forget to check out the description box for all my training programs, including my most popular push-pull legs hypertrophy program, which is split into two eight-week training blocks. Don't forget to like the video if you found it to be helpful, subscribe if you haven't already, and I'll see you guys all here in the next video.